Acting Commissioner, you said you were very proud of the corrections officers that uh, that work for you and how they've acted during the pandemic. I appreciate that sentiment. Uh, I certainly am. How did you come to announce prison closures for those COs and for their families four days before Christmas? If you're asking why that particular timing, uh, Assemblyman, it was not an easy decision to make. We were balancing a number of things. Had COVID never happened, we probably would have announced June 1st, July 1st, the latest. COVID happened, that complicated everything. And we're balancing, obviously, the decrease in the population, which is happening at a, a very rapid pace, something no, I, an I, average. I and I'm sorry, I only get three minutes, so I, I hate to cut you off there. But uh, Chairman Weprin brought this up um, in his question. He was talking about Watertown Correctional and, and the correctional facilities that you, you're shutting down here, which uh, the governor has the prerogative to do through you. Uh, you said in, in planning here, the first thing you have to do is close the facility. I would disagree. I think your job, whether acting commissioner or commissioner, would be to create a reasonable plan for prison closure um, and communicate that plan. Your next would be to take care of the employees that are under your uh, department. And then the following would be to take care of the inmates and make sure that everybody is safely done there. Leaders plan so that the, the, the next phase is not close the facility and then figure out what happens next. But I, I wanted to talk to you about safety and staffing and facilities since you brought that up as well. You said state safety of staff and facilities is of paramount importance. Is your analysis a key component of that? Yes, we, we look at everything. We, we look at um, how things are working at the facility, we look at the infrastructure, we look at the capital, we look at the proximity to other facilities where we can move staff. Most, most of all, we, we look at the, the actual infrastructure of the facility itself. You may, you, may re you, you may recall, Commissioner, back in September, on September 1st, uh, a number of us legislators penned a letter to you uh, asking that you reinstate the urinalysis program because of the danger that drugs in our facilities pose to both COs and inmates. Uh, you took two months to respond, and in your response on October 28th of last year, you said you were working as expeditiously as possible. Those were your words in that letter. Your staff then in, the, in last December said that the urinalysis program would start in January, which would be last month. Do you have a urinalysis program that is running in all of your facilities now? We have a urinalysis program that's an interim measure with, with a vendor um, that can, if there's reasonable suspicion to believe that someone has taken drugs, we will have that test done for this interim period. We have selected two new vendors, one an outside lab, one a supplier of the test. We have sent out the distribution of the kits to every facility. We are ready to implement. It will probably be done, I'm almost sure it will be done before the end of this month. So understand that when you're de dealing with things like COVID and vaccinations and relocating staff to, to stick to a, a schedule is not the easiest thing. Obviously, I would love more time, Commissioner, but mine has expired. You'll be hearing from me soon.